Right, I've got a great debate question here. Mm -hmm. We were talking about it on Loose Women actually the other day. Um, and as you know, uh, lots of women, uh, sexual appetite changes after the menopause. So... Um, I didn't know that. Um, I must have known. <laughs> So a friend of mine, you'll know who they are, but I'm not going to give their name, mm -hmm. uh, went really, really off sex. Right. Okay. In menopause. And you might guess who she is now when I keep talking. But anyway, so they haven't had any children and her and her partner have always had a really good sex life. Right. So when she went to him and she said, listen, you know, I've just, I've just gone off it. And I haven't gone off you. I love you. And I want to be with you. And I love you more than I've ever loved you before. Mm. We have this amazing life. But something's happened to me. And I just don't want sex anymore in the way that I used to. Mm. What did he and say? He said, This is so shocking. Well, that's just not an option. Oh, right. I wish Look I at your eyes. Oh, I, don't, I mean, I must admit, I would never have thought that was even an option. What to, to say, say that? In reply to, you know, a sexual appetite diminishing. Why? I, I would have thought. Well, because as soon as you, as soon as you were to, to sort of sit there and. Well, I think socially and in relationships, you're made to feel as a man that if you want sex it's somehow it's somehow not authentic as a man for some men because well, no i think it's i think women think it's authentic when they want sex what they what they sometimes worry about is if it's authentic that you want that they want you well no but i think that's my point i think there's this misnomer that men just want sex i mean you know and i don't know whether it's to do with the, the you know the, the 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 equipment or whether it's the fact that how it operates or whatever but there's this and assumption can i just interrupt for those who are just ni not listening and not watching this on our youtube mark did just articulate <laughs> I did look... around his groin area when he said that <laughs> um, but no no i do think that men more often than not are simply reduced to um I hate to use the phrase, but it's almost like men need to be serviced regularly and they'll keep shtum and that's what they require. Whereas actually, it's very much an emotional thing for men too. And not so the, re the reason I'm surprised, the reason not I'm surprised, not all men what? Not all men. For, not for a lot of men, it is a service. Well, yeah, but then within a relationship, presumably you can accept that in that relationship, that relationship is always unique and different. And, and, and so we're not here to comment on other people. So I'm saying as myself... Mm. But I just want to finish where this story went. So he well, said you asked her, me why I was shocked as to that reply. Yeah, I'm giving you the answer, yeah. which isn't that swift. And my shock is that I wouldn't have thought it would have been treated with any sort of degree of respect or embraced at all if he was to say it like that. Right. So this is what happens next. So he says this to her, and I'm in entire mm. agreement with everything you just said. So he said this to her, and what did she do? She... Blew a gasket. No, that's what you would expect. She thought to herself, right, I've got to do something about this. I am going to find a way to get myself back in the zone. That's not my stomach, folks. That's the dog. You're going to have to get <laughs> dogs. Come All on, right, down. 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 Um, Go away. Go I'm going to have to get myself back in the mood. So she mm. did various things, went back to reading a bit of porn, you know, you know, thinking about she, sex. She read porn. Yeah, going back to loving herself, you know. Can I just stop and say as a point there, just that very sentence characterises what women think men are. Went to porn. Why porn? Why? No, not porn photos. She read a really good sexy novel. Mm. Sorry to disappoint no, you. No, no, I'm not disappointed. Playful. I'm talking about the idea that this is... There's, there's a sort of Fifty Shades of Grey textbook on how men operate sexually. And in order to get myself in the right mood, I need to kind of obviously engage with porn, whether it be literature or whether it be... You know, I'm not saying we haven't all looked at porn, and porn out, you know. Yeah, but, you, but we're digressing. The point is, she, she went to something to try and get her back in the... Let's say it was cream cakes. Yeah, that'd get me going. <laughs> <laughs> the point was, the point that I'm trying to make is, she heard him. Yeah, that's unusual. She respected him. Right. And she did something about it. Now, some may think, well, she just petrified of losing him. Oh, well. And felt cornered. Well, and felt like unless duress. she did Not duress, this, duress. Yeah, unless she did this, she would lose him. Hmm. So here's another question. 
Got if questions you know, here, but I'm not getting a chance to if, answer it. If you know longer, I'm going to shut up in a minute because I think these are all part of it. I want to set this up yeah. as a good conversation. If you are no longer wanting sex, and this happens just as much with men as mm -hmm. it does with women, so let's let's turn it around and say man doesn't want sex anymore, mm -hmm. and the woman still does. And then that person goes off and have an, has an affair, and then they're outraged. Oh my God, they've had an affair. I mean, this is, and they haven't had sex with them for whatever. Mm. I don't really think people can moan about that. Oh, I don't think people can moan about it. I think you can make sure you're not in a situation where if you're in a loving relationship, and I'm not suggesting for a minute that this has happened, folks, but um, there's a difference between that and it sort of happening or just happening to happen, if you see what I mean, sort of accidentally and over time and requiring comfort and, and sensitivity and just wanting to have sex. Nothing wrong with wanting to have sex. Um, but if it can't be with your partner and it ends up happening with a stranger or with someone else or, you know, you have an affair, yeah, I think that makes sense. I think there's a difference in that, but to, to the idea that someone should go off. You, you should try and work it out between yourself. So if you went off sex and didn't want sex for like two years, and I did, and then I went and had an affair, would you, feel, really. would you feel justified in that? Would, 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 you I feel feel... Like, would you feel I was justified? No, I wouldn't. I'd be desperately hurt. No, I didn't say whether you'd be hurt. Uh, vice versa, if I if we hadn't had sex for two years and you went off to have an affair, I'd be hurt, but I would feel you were justified. Uh, no, I would feel that my feeling on it is, is that you need to work it out. You need to get to a place. If you're in a relationship, I do genuinely think if you're in a relationship where there is no longer any sex, are you actually in a relationship? Well, yeah, that's a good question. Because I, you know, I know there's all this kind of, you know, oh, well, it's not just about sex and sex. Actually, sex is a major part of the circle of love. And for me, personally, and you, you often characterise this as a male thing, it's the sex that leads and it's the intimacy that follows. But I don't even see them in that narrative. I see sex as part of a holistic approach to being close to someone. And if you remove any one element of that circle and holistic whole, everything goes out of alignment. And so for me... Yeah, I have over the years put more emphasis on sex. And when so when there have been periods in our lives where sex has been less present or less able because of kids and what have you, or the menopause or whatever, um, it's been difficult. I found it really difficult. But the thought has never gone through my head that I want to go and have sex somewhere else. I have had those self-doubts where I've thought, God, she's gone off it. She doesn't fancy me anymore. She doesn't like me anymore. Of course, you wouldn't be human if you didn't have those emotions. But to just go off and have a relationship or have an, have an affair... I think the best you could do is say to your partner, we get into a point where this is probably going to happen. Mm. I, think, I think where, and I know because I talk to so many women, and, I, and you know what I'm like, I don't do surface conversation really, I get right to the nub of everything with everyone I know. Like nobody's a friend of mine if we don't talk about everything. I just, yeah. But you, you know. won't talk about sex with me. But, you know, I just talk about everything. Well, well, because when I like listening, I'm just fascinated by the human condition. I'm fascinated by the way things work. And I think I've never met a woman that hasn't said... Toffee. If Toffee. only... I've never met a woman that hasn't said, if only my husband were more affectionate or my partner more affectionate, there would be more sex. They all say it. And they want that. And I think it's really difficult for men because I think that often... And, and, and honestly, this is going to be the other way around. We're talking all the time about men, but I think that this, I know also that a lot of women feel the same way about are, are more highly sexed than their male, mm. male partners. And, you know, it's a problem. And they're, they're saying, God, at least if I could just have some affection. Affection is a big problem in long-term relationships. So many people never kiss again, never kiss, you never hold hands, mm. never cuddle up. Mm. And I think a distance starts to come in where a lot of women will say, oh, well, I'm not going to. And a lot of men, well, I'm not going to because then that, will, that means sex. And but intimacy, what is intimacy? Intimacy is not only sex. No. Intimacy is cleaning the kitchen up sometimes. Intimacy is, is, is a hug. Intimacy is holding your head when you're being sick in the toilet. I totally agree. Intimacy but I tell you, so I'll give you things. one very, very bold headline reason for why a lot of men start to reduce their levels of intimacy. And this is a message for men, none of whom watch the, these podcasts, I've noticed, or listen really? to them. Really? No, about 10%. Why? Well, I don't know. I guess it's female orientated, isn't it? But why? You see, well, no, women no, they're want to in, work at the relationship. But, he, but yeah. headline reason for why men 
you know, when, when you've been in a relationship for a while and we all get used to each other, we all on some level take each other for granted. And I think we would say that in our, in our relationship, we strive hard to be mindful of those times that we are taking each other for granted and try and do something about them. It's the best you can do. But, but, but the reason I would say that men start to refrain from what you would call non-bedroom sexual intimacy is because there is often, not always, but often there's an assumption that any intimacy is misread as a first move to get to sex. When it isn't. So it kind of puts a little bit of a barbed wire fence around just being intimate in the kitchen, coming up and kissing you around the, around the back of the neck, holding out, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, there are certain things, and what can happen is that can just become the norm. And so the worry kicks in of, I don't want to be seen to be nagging for sex. I don't want to be seen to be asking for sex. I don't want to be thinking, oh, my luck's in tonight. There is an assumption and there is an, un I see it pass between the eyes of women in groups, especially loose women, where there's this assumption that, well, he's not really telling us what he means, but we know what he means. And no, we just don't want to actually sometimes send out a message that you're just going to say, oh, well, all he wants is sex. Sex is part of an entirely holistic approach to intimacy. And I would say sex is part of intimacy, whereas you're describing it in terms of there's all these other bits you need to do first. And unless all of that's in place, the sex thing can't happen. Well, no, it can actually. It can, many relationships start with sex and zero intimacy beforehand. Oh, of course, loads do. Well, yeah, but you can't just dismiss but that. Do How do we do you, that? I do think that you are, you are all of those things, and, and that's why I'm married to you. But I think there are, God, millions of men, millions of men, that are not. No, I agree, but I would say that, okay, I'm a bit of a navel-gazing, kind of been in therapy, gone into rehab. I'm very lucky. I consider myself lucky that I've been able to afford to do analysis on myself. You know, for a lot of men out there, you know, talking like this, I would never talk like this Having a drink when I was having a drink with my mates. We would not talk like this. We would talk about the feeling of, you know, whether you feel comfortable being intimate with your partner all the time because there's the worry, oh, well, you know, if I do that, well, of course, you know, it's not easy for men to access the nuanced details of all of this stuff. It just isn't. I mean, and some of the things that we love about men being men and women being women are the things that make it a bit limiting for us to see things totally from the other gender's perspective. It's what draws us to each other, but it's also what will always hold us apart a little bit. And my point on it is simply, I think, if one turns to the lack of intimacy in a male partner or, or, or a husband and looks at it from the perspective of maybe I'm putting out signals that I don't want him to be intimate with me. You, you, well, I think people do. And you, I think you, that, I mean, your I worst mean, times, I think, you can do that. You know, I it's think, like, stay away. Stay I think, away. I think, I think that both people in a relationship need to push through that. Because I do think that affection is hugely important. Mm. And whatever... You know, oh God, well, oh, I'd really like a cuddle, but actually I haven't got time yeah. to, you know, to do, then that's what happens. That's what, that's what starts to happen in a relationship. Okay, I'm going to pose another little scenario for you because yes, I really do believe you and I believe that you, that intimacy for you is lots of other things other than just sex, of course. But a lot of men don't. Mm. And a lot of men see their phallus as something completely separate from who they are as a person. So our producer was telling this story the other day. This friend of hers, it was a big birthday of hers, and her partner, well, she was her husband, right from the day before said, oh, I've got an amazing surprise for you, I've got an amazing surprise. Oh God, you just don't want, you're gonna be, you're gonna love this, it's gonna be great, blah, blah, blah. So it comes to her birthday, takes her out for like, a mediocre curry, mm -hmm. and she thinks, oh, you know, maybe this is it. Oh, well, I wish it was something a bit more. Oh, you think this is it? Don't you think this is it? Oh, well. Yeah. No, no. Anyway, cut a long story short. They get home. He says, I'm going upstairs to get your present. He calls her upstairs. She goes upstairs, and he's lying on the bed, stark bollock naked, with an erection and a ribbon on his penis. See, that makes me want to vomit. That's, but that, there are a lot of men like that, Mark. That makes me not only want to vomit, but it makes me feel sorry for the ribbon. I mean, pathetic. Is it someone you know really well? No, this is one of our producer's friends. I mean, They're divorced now, that couple. Hideous. They're divorced. I mean, hideously hideous. misconceived. No, no pun intended there. But hideously misjudged. I mean, I don't think... So what are you asking me? 
goes on in a man's like that? I don't think anything goes on in that man's head. And I think just as there are uh, women who aren't interested in anything other than seeing strippers and just, hey, look at that penis, a penis is just a wobbly thing that does weird things. You know, it, you either have a human approach to people or you don't have a human approach to people. I mean, what I would say about men, and I would say this about myself in the past, there is a completely different relationship between a man and his phallus once drunk. Right. Entirely different kettle of fish and at that point I would say That's in my not for all men though for no, you. no no not for all men but I would say that most men would probably agree that there is a different relationship at work going on there it's it, you know it'd be, you're off your, you're off your tits literally and and so your beer goggles all that sort of stuff kicks in so it's that funny balancing act isn't it between you know the conditions that actually get you together with someone. I mean, I remember having real problems with us getting together. I've always had the problems with, problems with the beginning of any relationship and trust because I've thought, God, if this could have happened between us, this could happen between you and someone else. It's always been a conundrum that's fed jealousy, that's fed, you know, a lack of self-esteem, fear, rejection, all that kind of stuff. I've thought, oh my God, this may have happened with us, but this will have happened with others and this could happen with someone else. And, you know, in many regards, thank God alcohol was there to get us together in the way that we got together, because otherwise we might not have the courage. I know we've covered this in another in another, another podcast, but I do think in, an, three, I in, in answer to your question, you know, why do men think with their phalluses? I think, you know, alcohol is such an accepted part of everyday life. So if you have a few drinks, your inhibitions go down, your boundaries go down, your morals go out the window, and everything's game on. But it's interesting as well that. A lot of you people know, use alcohol to get intimate. But you know, the other thing is, I, I just think it's so sad that I didn't know that, that only 10% of people that listen to this are men. I think it might be 12%. Because, I mean, it's because, not many. Because women do want to investigate in a different way about their relationship. I agree, I agree. And so that, just that very fact mm. tells us so much mm. about, about why so many people are unhappy in their relationships, mm. you know. Um, I do think you're right. I think, I, but I think you know because that ninety percent of women, if they're not happy, that ninety percent of men no, that they're with aren't happy either. But the only reason I'm offering up some thoughts on those men is that it's not all about just oh they're bastards, oh they're this, no, oh they're that. God, and I'm no. not suggesting you're saying that either. But I no. do think, I do think men get a Sorry. bad press for just thinking with their dicks when. All I would say as a, not even as a defence, but as an explanation is, well, fair cop, when, we were all, when we've all had a few drinks and we're out on the, on, the, on the lash, but how many women aren't exactly the same? You know, we talk about men who think with their dicks, mm. a lot of women just think with their with polite language, they're all right. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. You know, but I mean, they do. And, and, you know, especially in an age now where equality is deemed, and this is what I find curious when I watch a lot of these shows on TV, equality is deemed to be, are you as much of a bloke when you go out? as a woman are you blokish in your sexual predatoriness because that makes you more of a it makes you more equal to men it's like no don't adopt male these mental male kind of god no attributes but you know yeah so but i do i mean my thing all i would say is that i think i think if men were brave enough to watch things like this or engage with their partners or listen to their partners they discover they could get a lot more sex. <laughs> this is it. Wipe down the sides, fill the dishwasher, yes. make a spaghetti bolognese. That's why I'm always, always filling the dishwasher in my pants. <laughs> no, but you see, that wouldn't work. If it came in, in, in your pants, then that's not going to work. It's got to be care. With a ribbon just, around my penis. Just in case the 10% <laughs> of men that listen to this want to tell another 10% of men, cherish is the word, to feel cherished. Yeah is the greatest aphrodisiac there is. Cherishment, is there such a word? And I would agree in reverse, that I think more cherishing of men would yield the other results that women would like from their men. But men I think cherish women, too. I think women have so much more to do than men. I think they feel exhausted. I think they feel, so what, and now I've got a bloody cherish him as well as everything well, else. Well, here we go. This is the beginning of the end. And at that point, I think we should finish this podcast. Should we do a separate one on cherishment and whether women do more for men than cherishment. men do for women? I don't even know if cherishment exists as a word, but I think we <laughs> should do cherishment. Oh, and we'll do lots more sex as well. Oh, lots, this, lots this, of sex. This, this can go so on we, and on. Can we go and have sex now? <laughs> no. Well, fill the dishwasher. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs>